again at my second time making this video uh my old iphone 12 pro max ran out of space i got the 14 a couple weeks ago so we shouldn't have that problem because i upped my storage but here we are building the computer again this is the second time i've taken it down to do this video and i didn't realize that the video wasn't going to be completed until after i went to edit it and i was like where's the front of the video <laughs> So we just threw all of the footage away and we started from scratch. First things first, you got to, when you're building your PC, you got to find your case that you're going to do. Then you got to pick a motherboard. If you already have SATA drives, that's cool too. Are you doing M2? What kind of memory are you going to do? You know, what is your PC actually being built for? Is it for gaming? Is it for strictly gaming? Is it for casual gaming? Because this is all going to determine on the GPU that you pick. And the CPU for that matter. Is it for production? Is it for content creation? What is your gamer PC for? I would advise buying like a Dell or HP unless you just need something quick to do something. But if you're trying to make a powerhouse or something that's going to last you. Like this PC, I'm using the same hard drive. Well, theoretically the same uh, SSD drive that I had in my Windows 7 PC that I upgraded to Windows 10 changed the hard drive and made it to SSD and it was a gamer PC that I built in 2012. Well, it's 2022 and I had upgraded that computer for 10 years. You know, once the once the CPU got too slow, upgrade the CPU. Uh, maxed out the RAM initially to the capability of that board within the first uh three or four years then it was like okay we got the ram as it continued to slow down it was all hard drive based so i swapped out hard drives and put in ssds it gave me some more years and then uh as the processor because it was an am3 uh plus socket for the motherboard it was a gigabit motherboard and as that got down to it uh, we, we upgraded to the, I think it was the 8370 or it might've been the 80, 8350. And I did that last year and I had noticed, you know, some, cause I got new computers for work and stuff like that and stuff. So I noticed a difference in it, but I was like, it's cool. Cause I'm just gaming on it. I mean, not gaming on it. I'm just recording music. So as long as it's doing that, but then my music program started opening up really slow this year. And I said, you know what? It's time to do the bill. And here we are. So I kind of, Initially future proof my bill. Uh, I went with an AM4 socket. I got a board that does 5000 series uh, AMD CPUs. So I started off with what was last year's best greatest, you know, CPU a 5600X because I'm going to be doing casual gaming. But this is mainly for making music and uh, using this PC to stream when I'm playing console. I will be using it to, to play PC games. That's initially why I have the 1660 Super. Got that last year. You know, trying to, you know, upgrade that other computer and, and make it, you know, a little bit better. It could play Call of Duty for a little while. Was it last year or was it 2020? Uh, can't remember. I was playing Call of Duty on it. Uh, I was getting decent frames per second. And then I was just like, you know what? I, I like the way it looks better, you know, better on Xbox, uh, Series X or PS5 because I played on both. And move to that. I also had a gamer laptop where I dedicated that to gaming. So it wasn't too much of a necessity to do the PC. Now, I said, well, I need a powerhouse build. And because I had been grabbing different pieces throughout the last couple years, you know, M2 drives, SSDs, stuff like that, I didn't really have to spend too much. So this overall bill only cost me $800 this year, but in total, it's probably about $1,500. So what you want to do is, when you first start, because you're already in four minutes, when we first start, you want to prep your case. Depending on what your case is, you have to know what you're going to do, and you want to come up with a plan when you first build your PC. So let's open this one up. You're going to see some of the back pieces missing because, like I said, I already built this before. So this case here, you just unscrew the top. This is the TD500 Cooler, Cooler Master TD500 with the mesh 
front and it comes with three it comes with three fans on the front so what you need to do is decide here okay we can put a, a AIO here are you going to use AIO or are you going to use the CPU uh, fan that came with your CPU or are you going to buy an RGB fan or are you going to buy another fan? That's what you need to determine. And then you want to determine, okay, if I'm going to do an AIO, what position am I going to put it? Me, I'm going to put my AIO, I, AIO up here and have the air pushing through to go out because I'm going to have an exhaust fan because this fan came with three fans on the front. So if we look at this, you want to take your back off and take the back off as well here. Pull that off. And now you have an open case. Hold on, y'all. Now you have an open case. That's the first thing you want to do. You want to have an open case. Now, with this Cooler Master uh, TD500, like I said, it comes with built-in fans. Uh, hold on. This was easy to pull off. You just got to wiggle it. It's just plastic up front. Trying to be careful so I don't snap any of the clips. All right. That side came off the other side. There we go. So, it's just a mesh. But if we look at this here, we got two USB ports, 3.0 power, headset jack, microphone, and reset switch. If your case doesn't have a reset switch, then you're not going to have uh, some of the connectors to connect to your motherboard. Or if you're if you with this Cooler Master case, you can also use the reset switch because it comes with a fan hub, a RGB fan hub, and you can plug that reset switch into the case. Uh, I mean, into that header that that it comes with. However, I am not using that. I am going straight to the board because my board has RGB and I'm using splitters and all this other stuff. So the very first thing you want to know is, okay, my motherboard doesn't have the capability of USB. C on the front. I would have to do some kind of drilling or some craziness to do that. However, I still got a motherboard that had has a USB C connector on the front as well as the USB 3.0 panel on the front because like I said, I future proof the bill. If I want to change my case later on down the line and get one, I have that option because my motherboard has that option as well. And it doesn't matter if you don't use it, just spend it a little bit. I got the the Asus uh Tough Gaming B550 Pro doesn't come with Wi-Fi. I bought a Wi-Fi card because I need a Bluetooth in there. You can you can also look and get a you can also hold on y'all. Get in the car. You can also look um lost my train of thought. I apologize. Oh yeah, with with the uh, with the tough gaming, it, it came future proof for that. So we're gonna move on. I don't even remember what I was going to say, but if you do have a case that has a USB-C, that's what you, you know, you can do that. Now, if you're going to install a uh, AIO in the front instead of up at the top to have the air coming out or have the air going in however you want to, this is the time where you would come in and take these fans off. Uh, in order to take these fans off, let me turn this around. There's some screws on the inside here. Hold on, let me angle it so you can see. There's some screws there on the inside right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So these for this two, for this two, and then they, there's no screws at the bottom here. They're like clamps. So all you'd have to do is just slide those out, put your AIO in and push the case. Now, the very first thing is, is you wanna determine how you're going to set up your case this case comes with pieces to put the hard drives in. Look, it's already dirty in there. Pieces to put the hard drives in. <sighs> Gotta do some maintenance real quick while we do this. Uh, and you want to install your, your brackets for your motherboard, unless they're already pre-installed. And of course, on this case, they're already pre-installed. However, if you had a, cause this is an ATX, they have uh, smaller boards here. Uh, if you're not using every pin for the ATX, look up the specification for your board and pull the ones that you're not using. However, mine's an ATX, so it's going to use all nine of these pieces. One thing you want to look to here is in the middle. This is the middle one right here. 
it's raised a little higher than the other ones. It has another little, uh, these are all flush. This has like a little piece that extends for the screw. This is what's gonna hold your motherboard in place in the middle. Uh, all of these are gonna hold it in place, but this is going to, you know, to make sure where it fits perfect. It's gonna, it's gonna uh, put the motherboard in. It's gonna have a little room to go down on that knot there. So very first thing you wanna do is do a little cable management in the back. I've done a little cable management. I've put on a, a sleeve here. It's a smaller one. Uh, you want to make sure that, because this is the Cooler Master, like I said, this has a, uh, this is the front panel connector for the USB uh, 3.0, the two ports in the front. If you had another case that had USB-C, it would also have a USB-C port. So I'm going to put that aside. Then you have your your front panel connectors. This is your reset switch, your HD, HD plus LED, and then this is your uh, power switch. Uh, then you have your your HD audio piece that's going to go into your motherboard. And we're going to talk about that. And then you have your fan, your fan, and you have your RGB. Now, I have a bunch of splitters, and I'm not going to go through this, but if you have three fans, it's usually going to come with uh, three RGB connections. So you got the two here, and it goes, it feeds into this third one here, and it splits off, and it lets me have three RGB connected to one. So this one RGB is going to connect to this uh, header and you're gonna be able to, to sync them all together. Now it does come with a, like I said, it does come with a, a controller for RGB, but like I said, I'm not using that. We're gonna plug this directly into the motherboard. We're also gonna have all three fans operate off one fan header. So we're using up less space. So what I like to do is do a little cable management in the beginning, get all your cables together there. The only reason this one is not connected to this is because we're going through these holes and these are going through the bottom. So go ahead and prep those, put that in there. And then the next thing we're gonna do is, we're just gonna slide that case to the side and we're not gonna worry about it right now. The next thing we're gonna do is work with our MOBO, our motherboard. So, motherboard, B55, B550 Pro. First thing I'm going to do is install the CPU. Now, when I come in here, let's back out a little bit. Let's look at this here. Right here in the bottom corner here, you will see a gold mark. On Intel processors, they're going to be a little bit bigger, but this gold mark matches a piece on the board. So let's crank this up some. And let's zoom into the board. There we go. So, with the board, here we go. Let's get this in a little bit. With the CPU, there we go. Very easy installation. You don't have to force it, just lift this straight up. And you'll see here, let me zoom in some. You'll see here on the board, there's an arrow right there. You see that? That matches this gold arrow so what i'm going to do is turn the piece the the, the uh, cpu around to match that and all you have to do is simply uh oh don't push that it's just you see these pins you don't want to bend these these that's all bad if you bend it oh i got some thermal paste on there pause for a second okay we're right back i had to clean some thermal paste off so what you do again there's a uh, a triangle here you want to line this up that triangle with it. So all you have to do is literally just place it on there and it should fall into place. Let gravity have its effect, no need to push it. And then you simply just go down from here and lock it into place. It should move. If you wanna verify that it's installed correctly, all you have to do is just take that and lift it up, that clacks back and you pull it out and you take a look and you're good to go. So again, you just put it in, drop it in there, should be just fine. Push it in there, CPU, very easy, very easy piece. Next thing that I probably wanna do is do the memory. You wanna look at your motherboard and this B55, B550, I keep saying B55, but it's close, B550, you know, B550, it's a staggered 
position if you only have two strips. I have two, where's my memory? I have two 16 gigabyte strips. So total 32, this board will do 128. Uh, if I had four, it'd be fine. If you have four, just install them the way, you know, right to left and just fill up all four slots. However, if you have two, you have to stagger it to the gray ones. That's why they're gray. They let you know those are the ones that you install on if you're only using two. Those are your main ones. If you're in, you're, that's why they're gray to stick out. But not every board is like that. You want to look at your motherboard manual, but this is the B550 Pro. And this, uh, this is how you install it. So you want to look at this notch here. See this notch right here? And line it up with that notch. And line it up with that notch. You open these up. As you can see, these black ones open up too. But I'm not using those because I don't have four. Eventually, I will have four. But you want to look at it first before you push it down. Line it up in the grooves. Is that perfect the way it is? It's looking like it to me. Then all you have to do is doesn't like me today put it in there and then push down till you hear the click did you hear that click once you hear the click you're good to go next thing you want to do go ahead and do it for the second one and if you only have one that's fine you only have one but i would advise always having at least two sticks push down and you hear a click and you're good to go now when you come in and you want to do two more you put them in slot here and slot here don't get a third without getting a fourth because the problem with it is, is that if you install them both one, two, you're going to be running two strips in single channel. This allows it to run in du double channel, dual channel. So if this board has two spots for M2, this is M2 Gen 4, and then this one over here is M2 Gen 3. Let's zoom in a little bit. If you have a double-sided Gen 4 strip or M2, there's a little, you see this rubber piece here? If we zoom in a little bit more, there is a another piece here that you attach if you have a single sided, just to give it a little bit more room. So if you don't have a single sided one, then you just, it's this rubber piece already attached to the board. But there's a little bitty another cut square, as you see mine is off a little bit, that you have to install here. So you remove the 3M tape, put it there. How can you tell that you have a single sided um, M2? It's easy. On this side here, you can see that there's no chips. On that side, you see that there's chips. That's single-sided. If it's double-sided, you're gonna see chips like this on both sides. So, very, very easy to determine if you have a single side. Motherboard tells you to put that in there. M2 installation is very, very quick. You see you have this notch here. You wanna make sure that that notch matches here. So, if we do, let's turn the board around so you can see it this way and it'll be an easier look. See that little notch is over here. Let me zoom in a little bit. See that little small notch. Good Lord, this camera's on a stiff axle. This little notch, so you're gonna install your M2 just like this. That little notch fits there. So all you wanna do is take your M.2 here and push down. And once you push down, you want to get your M2 screw. Now your motherboard might come with this or your uh, M2 might come with this. I would advise that you get a magnetic screwdriver so that you can manage your screws. And all you do is just push it down and screw that in. Don't screw it too tight, it doesn't need to be too tight, it just needs to be laying down. One thing that I didn't discuss here that I did in the other video is this is for both. There is a little peg here that you can unscrew, see? And you can move it to the size of your M.2. My M.2s are 2280. Those are gonna be your standard size M.2s. So what I did was is install it on the 2280 and then I installed my other SSD. Now this is my Gen 3 SSD M.2 and I'm going to install this one over there, the same way I just installed the other one. So find your notch, put it in at an angle. It should be up like that. Get your screw, push down, line it up, screw it in, just like that. It's very, very easy. Building a PC is not hard, and believe it or not, we're halfway done. The most gruesome part is, is uh, 
the damn wiring. So these come with, if you have this board, I would advise not buying a heat sink, but if you do a, a, a SSD or a M2 with a heat sink, that's up to you. You won't be using these. So these are your thermal pads. So when you first take this off, there's going to be plastic here. You want to peel that plastic off. Otherwise, this will prevent your card from making contact with the thermal pad to keep it uh, to distribute the heat. This thermal pad is going to distribute the heat to this plate, and this plate is going to send the heat away from the SSD or the, I mean, from the M.2. So what you want to do is line these up. There's no wrong or right way to put this on. It literally has a, a silver piece here, though, that goes directly here. Oh, you can't see that. Let me zoom out. That goes directly here. So you want to line that up because that's a little lifted. And this, it's like got a, like a little lip on it. And this little silver piece, you know, uh, goes into that lip. So you can line it up, get that silver piece in the lip, and screw her down. Once you got her down, you're good to go. Boom. Lock her in. That back one's a little bit different. You heard her high popped a little bit. And if you look at it, now your board is flush with that pad that's underneath. That, that single-sided piece is pushing it back up. This thermal pad is making a complete elevated, it's making a contact with your M.2 drive and your heat distribution is gonna be good. So we're gonna do that same thing over here. Like I said, this piece right here has like a little metal piece and it has a lip there. So we're going to go ahead and just line that up. That's lined up. Gonna line that one up and press them down gently and just screw it in. And believe it or not, we got most of the hard part done. Now, if you have a CPU cooler, my uh, CPU came with a Wraith cooler, not using that, I'm using the AIO. At this point is when you want to determine your AIO position. So, but we got this going on here. So if you're going to be using a CPU cooler, this is when you want to install it here. If you're not, or you're gonna be using one of those big heat sinks uh, coolers, this is when you wanna install it now. If you're not, then we can move on to everything else because that's pretty much it for your motherboard. Unless you, you can install your, your um, GPU, but I always save that for the end. If you have a Wi-Fi card, which I do, my Wi-Fi card is going to go into one of these slots here. I can't remember which one, but we'll see when we put it in there uh, because this board doesn't have Wi-Fi. If you got the uh, B550 Plus, there's a Plus, there's a Plus Wi-Fi, and there's a Plus Wi-Fi too. The Plus Wi-Fi, the original Plus does not have Wi-Fi. Then you have the Plus Wi-Fi to have a Wi-Fi connection back here so it'll be on the board so you're good to go. And the Plus Wi-Fi 2 has Wi-Fi 6, and I think it might be 6 or 6E, and it's it's connected here too, so you wouldn't do that. But I wasn't, I don't use Wi-Fi on my computer. It's directly hardlined. However, I need a Bluetooth, so I went ahead and bought an Asus Wi-Fi uh, card that's going to be using USB because the USB uses that to, to broadcast the Bluetooth, and the PCIe uses that to broadcast the Wi-Fi which I don't care about the Wi-Fi, but the Wi-Fi is blazing fast. The card I got does Wi-Fi 6, and it's good to go. So at this point, you're really good to go. What we need to do next is install your motherboard into your case, and then we're gonna start the wiring, and we're good to go. All right, now what we're gonna do is the motherboard install. I would advise that you get a screwdriver that does some sort of extension uh, because now this is the bottom of the case here. Here's the top. You want to get a screwdriver that does some sort of extension because, and that's magnetic so that you can do these screws because I have very big hands, especially if you have big hands, you're going to have issues trying to install the motherboard. So your motherboard should come with screws. And what you want to do is line up your motherboard to match your IO. In your I.O. shield, I forgot to say, you want to install that before you do anything, but you want to match this up with your I.O. 
and then you want to also match it up with that middle connector so guide your io panel to the back and then push your motherboard to where that piece you see how it snapped there that's where that raised lip is to hold your motherboard in place. So now you want to install your nine screws. If you have a motherboard that has six screws, then that's it. But this is a full ATX screw. And what I'm gonna do is just extend this here. And I'm gonna start with the middle. See how that magnetic helps you? It just holds the screw in place. So while we did all that, we just installed the motherboard and you should be good to go at this point. Now all you have to do is just stand her up or you can come in and install your stuff laying down, but I like to stand my stuff up. So next part is going to be, okay, there we go. So we got the motherboard in, we got our CPU in, we got our memory in, we got our M2s, our drives and everything. Now, one thing is, this is your SATA 4, I mean not SATA 4, this is your M dot two gen four the same drives that they're putting in playstations all of that right gen four it's run and powered by the cpu this is your gen three you have six sata now if you haven't seen my description about this motherboard go to my other two motherboard videos and it'll explain to you but you have sata lane six back here that goes deactivated when it when you insert a drive into the m.2 lane here it disables drive six you still have six sata ports i mean five other sata ports but uh sata port six is disabled by default when you install a drive here if you don't install a drive you have all six so now you need to determine am i going to use sata drives what's a sata drive sata drive is your standard 2.5 laptop size drive or your laptop size um solid state drive or HDD. Now this has brackets here to put your SSDs. I can put two here. That's where I'm going to put them. It also has, turn this around for you, two brackets here to put your SSDs here. So if you want your SSDs here, you can put them back here. I don't want to put them back here because this is the back of the case and there's not going to be much airflow back here, so I don't want to put them here. And then plus, it's going to mess with my cord management piece of the motherboard. I mean, of the uh, things you see you got here. Now, this is also a time when you need to determine. When you open up your power supply, you have zip ties and all these different things. I'm not a fan of zip ties because I mess with my computer too much. And to me, they're too permanent. And then you have to cut them and you lose them. To me, that's a loss of money. I am a strong fan of velcro i have different types of velcro velcro you can use the same to do cord management you can use them in these slots here and it's not permanent you can move your cords the way you want to to me it's just more manageable i tinker with my computers too much so i don't want to have a knife and come in and cut the zip ties and if i zip tied it too close then i have i run into an uh, instance of trying to almost cutting the wire and all this stuff i just prefer not to do it i've always been a big fan of uh, Velcro doesn't start any fires is good. It's not connected to open wires unless you get it connected to an open wire Then it's going to be an issue. So what you want to do is with your cord management On this motherboard your HD audio is going to be here Your you got fan headers. You got RGB headers. You got your RGB one here. There's another one over here. You have uh, uh, RGB addressable headers for light strips here. And there's another one up here. I wish they would have put another. I don't care about addressable. But anyways, you have your uh, T TPM here. You have your Thunderbolt. Where's that Thunderbolt at? This is Thunderbolt header here. You have your USB-C 2.0s here. So that's where one of my Bluetooths is going to go. You have your USB-C front panel. Uh, you have your USB 3.0 front panel. You have your motherboard uh, power here. So now you need to plan out how you want to do it. And then this is going to be our control panel here. Here's another fan header. So there's an AIO header and a fan that I'm going to use for my exhaust. There's another CPU header, which is gray up here. And then you have your CPU opt. I'm not going to use a CPU opt. These are both for fans too. Now you're going to connect. If you were connect, if you had a connected your uh, Razen, uh Wraith cooler, you would have connected it to the CPU fans. If you were going to connect um, your, uh, what is it called? The, the, the big joint 
with the thermal heat pad and the fan on top of it, you plug it in there. I'm gonna plug my AIO fans that are on the radiator into the CPU, and then there's an AIO pump header, which is dedicated to cooling the CPU itself. Those fans are gonna be dedicated to cooling the liquid that comes through the radiator. So that's one thing you wanna do too. So the very first thing I like to do is, I've already done my cord management for my, my panel, my front panel. I've already connected my fans and everything. One thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push this through here. That's my USB-C, I mean my USB 3.0. My HD audio, as you can see, it's already bent. Like I said, I already built this computer. I'm gonna push this up through here and pull that through, hold that there. And there's, you just install it here. Now on this board specifically, it's gonna say AAFP. And there's, 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 there is a wrong way to install it. However, this board has five, not nine pieces, nine pins there, and there's a pin missing right here. It's closed out. And over there, there's a pin missing on the board. So you just line that up and push it down. I put my hand on the back to support it. And you want to be gentle. You don't want to break those pins. And you can always use the back to see. It's not fully connected down. So I'm going to wiggle it a little bit and push it in. Now we have our HD audio. That's your HD audio for your board. Okay? Got that connected. Now... The next thing you want to do is you want to use your RGB. I push my RGB through here and then you have your front panel and you have your fans. So you have to position how you want to do it. So you want to look for your RGB. And now we haven't stored, we haven't stored the, uh, we haven't put the power supply in yet. That's going to be our next thing. However, what we want to do is, is we want to locate our RGB. My bad, I didn't kick the camera. We want to locate our RGB. Let's zoom in a little bit. Let's go down some. Hold on. This is your RGB, addressable RGB. And then there's a fan here and there's a fan there. So you want to plan out because if you're going to have your SSDs come here, this is going to be a very cluttered spot. I don't use, I'm not using SATA coming from the power supply. I'm using MUX because I'm using a dual connector, excuse me, that has SATA, both the SATA power and the SATA cord that connects to the motherboard as one piece that you slide into your hard drive. You'll see that in a second. So that's gonna, you know, make it uh, kind of busy in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to bring the RGB header through here. We're kind of busy today. I'm gonna bring the RGB header through here. And there's only one way to do it. If you look at this, there is two, one in the middle that's closed out in, in the third. On the board, it's exactly the same. So all you have to do is, I don't like the way that's sitting. Let's move it over here. All you have to do is pull it through, line up the pins. Don't press too hard, you don't wanna force nothing. Just wanna line them up. And like I said, you can use the back to guide and get you a visual angle on the actual board itself. So boom, there we go. So now that may create a problem because we're gonna have our, we're gonna have our, let me see how these cords look. Yeah, we're gonna have, oh, let me, let me look, let me look. Because I'm gonna have my, what you call them coming through there, my video card coming through there so yeah no we're going to go through that middle piece so let's go back like i said line it up and so i'm always trying to cord manage bro i really am because it affects it uh -oh. line it up it was more lined up the first time am i tripping Bro, what is going on? I got it lined up. Why is it not going on there? There we go. Like I said, you don't want to force nothing. There we go. Install successful. So you got that going. Now, the next one is easy. Now we're going to do the fan last. 
That's easy. This is going to be your problem here. Because with this specific case, they're like really broke down. So what you want to do here is you want to look at the motherboard, but I'm going to show you what's going on with this particular case. It kind of pissed me off. So <coughs> we're going to pause the video. Okay. So this is the part where I was talking about here. So you got now this is your front panel power and everything that you got going on. So you have your power switch, you have your power LED negative, your power LED positive, your HD LED negative and positive, and then you have your reset switch negative and positive. I don't know if you can see this, but the positive always has an arrow on it. If you turn over every one of these, you're going to see an arrow on it. Now what you want to do is look at your board here and i need a flashlight even though it's daytime so i can see it and it's going to tell you how to do it M on this board my power led goes up here my power switch goes up here negative a uh, positive negative positive negative positive negative now the reset switch is down here too but it's negative positive so now you see why it's it's changed here so what you want to do is line up your power switch <clears throat> excuse me sorry your power led which is going to say power led here is a positive and then you have your hd led which is going to go in front and then you have your power led negative so these two here go in the back so we're going to look here at the positive the power led positive and the power led negative and all you have to do is just push those two pins in just as such there's power LED positive, power LED negative. Boom, install, halfway done. Then you wanna look here and you see your HD positive and negative, cool. We wanna install our HD positive and negative. And you can look at your motherboard, but it says it on the motherboard. You can look at your motherboard instructions, but it says it on the motherboard itself. And then you want your power switch which goes down here, get out of the way, next to your power LED, positive and negative. And you line that up. I wish this was all one piece, but I get it because different motherboards have different things. So you have to make it different. And then you want to install your uh, reset switch on this board specifically, negative, positive. I've used the reset switch once, and probably won't use it that much. So I wouldn't even really have to hook it up, but because it's on the board, I might as well hook up. Also, <clears throat> this is, if you're not, if you're not using uh, your reset, if you're not using your motherboard to control your fan's aura and you're actually using the reset switch to be able to control it, good God, that's not going in there. My fingers are big, bro, and I just can't fit in these little spaces. That's my main problem about building PCs. So I'm gonna have to use my other hand and kind of jerry rig that joint. Did I get it on there? Nope. I think I did that time. I did, boom. And then all you wanna do is push that there. Then boom. So that's that. And then while we're here, look, it's just beautiful right there. You want to install your fan header. Now this says fan header three. I'm going to connect it to fan header two. You'll be able to tell because it's gonna tell you what it is. But you remember, mem you know, you just put it to muscle memory. Let me make sure this is installed correctly. There's a little groove here that fits with the fan and it's only one way to go. You can't install it wrong, it's four pins and that clip holds it in place. So fan two is always gonna be my front panel. So I know that my front panel fan two is really three fans all connected to one fan. So now we got that going good. Everything's good to go here. Then you got your fans, boom. You got your RGB connected and you got your front panel. So all of your panels are connected except for now we need to connect uh, the USB. <laughs> And we can zoom out and do that real quick while we have the computer laying down. 
Now your USB for your front panel is located right here. There's a notch here on this side that matches the notch here. I don't know if you can see that, let's zoom in. There's a notch here, see that? That matches the notch here in the front. So what you want to do is turn your cord around and you want to be really gentle. You don't want to bend any of these pins at all because if you do, boy, sayonara to your case. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna have to go get a whole new front panel case or a new connector here to, to for your USBs. So, and what you wanna do is line it up with that notch and push it in and you're good to go. It only can go in one way uh, correctly and you're good to go. So now that's where we are with the install. Now, as you see, everything's connected here. So let's zoom in a little bit. You got your USB connected. You got your front panel connected. See, it's a little busy here. Like I said, it's real busy in this area. Uh, that's why I'm not, when I push my thing here, it's going to, it's going to be a little problematic, pro problematic, but it's fine though, because we're good to go. So you can install your SSDs and everything how you want to right now, but what I'm going to do here is, is I'm going to connect the power supply. So let's move this case out of the way and let's go get the power supply and let's talk about it real quick. Because we don't really need that just yet. If you have a semi-modular, that means that you can remove some of the pieces. This is a fully modular. The way you want to install this into the case is you want to push this down. So we're gonna push that down just like that. We want it down head first. We want the fan down at the bottom. And what you wanna do is zoom in, let's zoom in here. And let's turn this over so you can read it. You have your CPU, PCIe slots. You have your SATA slots. This is where your Mullix and your SATA cords are gonna come. And then you have your CPU, motherboard connection. So let's talk about that for a second. Let's zoom out a little bit. So you want to decide what cord you want to use. If you're going to use SATA, then you're going to use SATA. If you're going to use Mullix, because you have a different type of connection, that's cool too. But my thing is, is that I'm using Mullix because like I said, I'm using a one type connector and it uses Mullix and it powers the same. So what you want to do is I have a cable extender on here because I want my, you know, my uh, motherboard to be stylish coming out of the back. So I connected my cable extender. Now you can get custom cables <clears throat> that are this color all the way through, but because it's not, you want to, where it says MB, it says motherboard. You want to make sure that these match up with it and you connect them this way. So I'm going to push that in to where it snaps, right? And then you want to do the same thing on this side. Push that in to where it snaps and you're good to go on that end. Now, this is a CPU slot. This is a CPU slot as well as your uh, CPU slot and then these slots here are for your uh, you can do CPU or you can do um, your GPU I'm gonna have my GPU coming from here and then I'm gonna have my two CPUs here because my board has eight connect it has an eight pin and it has a four pin as well so what you want to do is you see how this says power supply unit this is going to be connected to my CPU and then I have my extender here for my GPU so as you see here the part that says PSU goes to power supply it also say BE 480 now this is a uh, before 48 this is a ROG strict 750 gold 80 plus 80 plus gold so it's fully modular and I want it fully modular because 
I wanted to future proof my build. It's 750 watts. If I need to get another one, that's fine. So this is gonna go to my CPU and this is gonna go to my CPU. You see it says CPU, that's the part that you wanna to connect to the board, not the power supply. The power supply says PSU. So we're going to connect these two here. I kind of put them, this is going to go in this way. So I put the power supply ones more closer to the edge so we have less cable, you know, so we have better cable management. And then we have this here. And then I used to use this one here to do the PSU. Uh, I mean the GPU, but because my GPU is going to be coming through a certain area, I'm going to plug it in down here towards the bottom. And then I'm always thinking about cable management. So we got GPU, CPU, motherboard. All of those are connected. Now the next step is, is to install this into your case. So get these wires here. And then we're going to move all these wires over here. And we're going to bring the case back into the picture. So now we have the case. So let's zoom out a little bit so you can see what's going on here. So, well, we don't really have to zoom out. We're good there. So with the case, what you want to do is you want to install. This had brackets here for hard drives. And since I'm not using hard drives, I pulled that bracket out to give me better room for my cables. You want to be really careful. I normally lift these up because I don't want my power supply to mess up how they're connected or push them out of the way or disconnected. So I lift these up and I bring my power supply in just like this. So let me show you here because these are going to go on the outside of the power supply. So you want to take your power supply first. Let me turn it over because there's a hole here space for air to come in. And if you install your power supply is going to be trying to pull air from in here, which you would get it because there's holes here, but this is dedicated to make sure that you're getting the proper airflow from the bottom of your cage. And that's why it's lifted. So I lift these cords here and I kind of just wiggle the power supply in. It's a delicate balance of love because I have to like lift it up and make sure that these cords are not disconnected and make sure that I don't damage them either. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to push that in just like that. And I'm watching my cords as I'm installing them. Just to make sure it doesn't grab nothing and bend no pins. And then I'm turning it. And Eureka, we have success. Now, what you want to do is line that up. And we're good there. So now, you want to line your power supply up. And you want to screw it in. Now your power supply on the back of your case is going to fit. There's various different levels of screws here. Mine is here, 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 and here. So what you want to do is take your power supply screws and you want to screw them in. So now let's turn the case back around and we're cooking with gas. We only got a little bit left here now. We're really, your computer's really definitely hooked up at this point and ready to go. You just gotta power it up. So what we're gonna do here is, is I'm going to figure out a little bit of cable management before we move forward because I need to figure out how this is all gonna fit in. Before we figure out how we're gonna do our cord management, we're gonna turn this around. So let's take a look here. With your CPU cords, you see they're right there. Boom, boom, four and eight. Now you don't have to hook them up because like I said, you, you don't need all the power. But since I have it, why not? I mean, why not? So what you want to do is line these up and turn it around like this to fit. So... Let's move this over here so I can get in there. Now, before I was using uh, cables, uh, I was using extended cables, but I'm like, I don't need extended cables for this because it makes it more cluttery in the case. Hold on. So instead, I'm just gonna use the cords from the PSU. Bro. I guess I should have hooked up the other one first. 
I'm going to use the cord from the PSU first. Maybe we can get them in there together. There's that one. Maybe we can line them up and get them together because they are not playing nice today. My build is hating me today, bro. It really is. Trying to make a short, sweet video, and I know this is going to be longer than I want it to be, but I guess that's the power of editing. Put it in there. You can always see if it's clipped. Let's take a look. Yeah, it's hooked up. All right, cool. Then the next one, we're gonna come in. We're only, only gonna use half of one. So, we want to push this through. Give ourselves some leeway. Pull that through a little bit. I'm going to push this through here. We're gonna hook up the fourth one here, the second, the, the, the second piece here. I'm gonna give myself some more leeway. Pull that down because you got a little bit of room. Pull this through here and line it up. All right, we got it in there. So now your power supply is installed. And now what you can do is just pull these back through. Now, if I wanted to use the cable extenders, I could, and it'll kind of like clean it up to where I only have a certain amount of wires. But at this point, I really don't care because nobody can see that up there at the top. So, and it gives me more cables to manage. So now let's turn this around. And what you want to do is feed your motherboard cable through either this hole or that hole at the bottom and or the top one and I'm going to feed it through the top one so the way you do that is let's zoom out a little bit is figure out how you want your cords placed and I'm going to have the mobile go through here so it's easier with the cord management of the fans so i'm gonna have it go through here and i'm gonna push it through the top here just like that and then we're going to turn it around so you can see the connection itself so there's only one way for the motherboard to go there is a clip here and there is a, a catch. Let me see if I can zoom in on that. As you see, there's a catch right here that holds that clip. So you want to turn your cord around, line it up, and you'll hear a clip. You hear that? It snapped. Now you can use your cable combs to make your wire look a little bit better and keep it in line and make it, you know, to where it looks better going out of the case. So now you have your cable combs doing that perfectly just like that. And now I have a nice view. So my SSD installation is gonna be pretty easy. Like I said, I'm using the ones in the front. So what you wanna do here is do a little bit of a cord management and maintain that stuff that's going on there. So, 
So the cords that I'm using here are, I'm not gonna disconnect these because these are connected to the mucks, but when I push them through, I'll explain to you what they are. They're, like I said, they're all in one piece that, that will go into my SSD drive. So I'm gonna push these up through. And those are used for mugs. That saves me two cords because then I would have had to connect the, the SATA cable to my power supply and also have an additional cable here to go around to connect to my motherboard. But this is a one piece and it's powered by mugs. So this gives your, your uh, SSD or your hard drive uh, access to both be able to talk to the motherboard as well uh, to be read as a drive and then your power all in one piece. I love it, thought it was a great idea. I was like, that's what I wanna do. So let's feed the second one through. Here it is over here. And like I said, this is gonna be crowded here because of that. Cause then we're gonna also run our GPU cord through there. So at this point, we're And then on your drives, they have these little peg feet. Is that four? Am I missing? One, two, three, four. Where did that one go? Other one's over here. They have these peg feet that you screw into the bottom of the drive. You see? So you just screw it in. Just like that, see? And they sit like that to fit on the inside. So I'm gonna screw those in real quick. Now, before you install your drive, you want to connect it to your SATA power, which is powered by MUX. Or if you have your SATA drive and you have a separate SATA cable, hook up your SATA power to SATA to your power supply, and hook up the SATA cable to your piece here. So what we're gonna do here is now, zoom out a little bit. We're going to line up the L's. As you see on the drive, there's an L here and there's an L there. Well, this is perfect. So you just line it up and install. Boom, done. Line it up and install. So, what you want to do is push this through. Like I told y'all, this is very packed over here in this area. So what you want to do is push that through and then set those through just like that. Push that through, then set those through just like that. And you're good to go. So now we got HD audio, RGB, we got our fan headers, we got our power switches and everything, and we have our SSDs installed. So we are good. Drives, everything, we are golden. Next thing you want to do, though, is that you have to run your SATA cables. Now, this is, like I said, this is my all-in-one piece. You have to run your SATA cables through to connect them to your motherboard. So I'm going to push that one through there. And where is my other one at? It's right here. I'm trying to hide in between this Hornets and the supports, which is fine. We're going to do some cable management. We're going to clean that up. So then, boom. Push those through there and get them right where you want them. So when you do your cable management, hold on, let me pull this one back through here. Cause no, that's right. Is that through? Yep, that's right. Okay, cool. So, and like I said, you wanna be planning your cable management the whole time you're doing it. So again, like I said, this SATA here, you wanna line up the L's. SATA six is gonna be disabled. So I stay far away from it. And then boom, you got your two SATAs connected. And you're good to go. Maybe I want to connect it to this, this second, third one here for a little bit more leeway on the cables. So you connect them to your SATA and you're good there. So boom. So we got that. We're good to go there. And now everything is connected except for the GPU and your AIO. So I'm gonna install my GPU. So the next thing you do here, <clears throat> excuse me, is you're gonna take 
you're gonna line your GPU, GPU up here with this, and you wanna make sure you take the brackets out to fit. So let me zoom out a little bit. Let's raise the camera. And let's lay this bad boy down. Get all your cables as best as you can. Hold on, we gotta push them through because there's a few of them protruding out the back. We're gonna push this through just for a second so I can lay this box down. And then boom. So lay this down. Don't worry about the cables crunching, you're fine. And then what you wanna do is with your GPU, which is terms for graphic processing unit. I'm gonna turn this around so you can see it. We're gonna look down here. So you wanna line it up. You wanna push this back, cause this is not gonna be pushed back. You see these move. You wanna push this back. Let's zoom in a little bit. You wanna push this back, cause like I said, these move. Push this back. You want to put your GPU in there and make sure it lines up there. And then you wanna push it till you hear the click. And then it's just like that, boom, it's done. So, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and install my Wi-Fi as well because um, we're already back here at the back of the case. So, if you don't have Wi-Fi on your board, you can buy one of these here, the Asus uh, Wi-Fi's. And it comes with Bluetooth and that's what this cord is here too. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip the case around. So you can see it, maybe you can't. Ah, oh, we should have put that in before the GPU. It's all good. We'll find it here. So what you wanna do is we don't really have to, so I'm gonna hold it up like that so you can see it. We're gonna install it on this PCI slot here. So, and that's these pieces here, you see that? So you just push it in here, you find it on the board. Line it up. Hold on. You line it up, find it on the motherboard, push it, boom, it clicks. But before we do that, let's take that out again. And what you want to do is, this is easy. It's Wi-Fi 6E. See that says 6E? You want to connect this. If you're going to be using the Bluetooth, if you're not, then don't worry about it. But because you're, I'm using Bluetooth as well too, you want to push that in there and then install it. My alignment's off. Boom. So once you install it, you are good to go. And then what we want to do is let's zoom down. Take it down into the case. And then let's come back some. All right. So remember those USB pieces we had earlier? I'm going to show you here. So what I do here is, is now I'm going to take this cord and push it through the bottom because I don't want this just dangling out here. So I'm going to go to the back of the case, run this through here. And like I told you, this is part is gonna be real crowded over here. Push that through, pull that out as far as I can in the back and then have it come up through here. I could have it come through here and connect, but maybe I should do that. Nope, not long enough. So you wanna hook this up to your USB piece on your board. I can get my hands in there and pull it through. There we go. So now you always wanna fill your cords and get as much room as you can. This has a little notch. The USB has a notch as well. And we're gonna just plug it into one of the USB 2.0s. 
and push it in. Now you have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So as like I said, this is a very, very busy area. Very busy area. The GPU cord may not fit through there, but we might can get it through here. So we'll see. It's a very busy area. We'll probably just come through here like we did last time. So push that through and we are good. We just got to install the GPU cord and do some cable management. So let me do my cable management and we'll be back. All right, next step is now that we've done some cord management is to install GPU. Some GPUs are going to have more than one 8 pin since mine's a 1660 Super. It only has the one 8 pin. So let's get this turned around and have it come through here. You line the pins up. Most likely it's going to be two, uh, a six pin and an eight pin. And you line them up and you'll hear it snap. And then what you want to do is take your cable combs and line your GPU up. See, before we're going to have it go back through there, but it's real busy over there. So we're just going to have it do a little highway here. put a bunch of cable combs on there in preparation just in case so we have to do a little highway to the power supply and you can have like before I had it going through here but like I said it's really busy so it changed my association and it's cool though because as long as it's connected to where it needs to be we are good to go we're just going to go ahead and clean that one up. To fit our needs. Then boom. There we go. And she's turned it. Then you can turn it the way you want. You know, just like that. You can situate it the way you want. And the cable combs really make it so the cords are not messy. But then you're good to go there. So that is pretty much everything. Uh, the next thing we just need to do is install our AIO and our uh, fan, our exhaust fan, and our Wi-Fi. And we are good. So what you want to do is with your AIO... Let's pull this to the side and let's talk AIO. If you are doing an AIO, if you're not doing the AIO, then you've already done the CPU install. Then the next thing is to put your exhaust fan in. But since we're doing the AIO, we're gonna make some room for that here. So with the AIO, you have liquid cooling. It has a fan. And uh, this is your fan, three pin, so it's gonna run full speed. Three pin fan, and then you're gonna have your RGB connector. So what you wanna do is you wanna visualize the way this is gonna go. So if we take it to the case like this, mine is gonna be hooked up like this, and the AIO is gonna be connected to the CPU like this, and that's how it's gonna cool. So the way I install my fans was to reflect that. I want my fans to go to the bottom. So I'm not gonna install them here, but I'm gonna show you. It comes with four fans here, you situate it. And now if you have a 360, this is a 240. If you have a 360, it has, these are 120 fans. So, you know, 120 times three is 360. 120 times two is 240, so this is 240. So your radiator will be way out here to compensate for another fan and you would have the splitter. So the first thing you wanna do is put your fans, diagnose the way you want to, to put your uh, case. Now, if I wanted to do my fans like this and have the AIO coming this way, then I would take these fans and flip them and turn them around. But because I want my AIO to come like this, I have it like this. So install your fans that way, connect. It comes with a splitter because you have your RGB. It comes with a splitter to make these three RGBs connect. 
It has the RGB here uh, for the ASUS, the MSI, and the AS Rock. This is going to go into your RGB header at the top of your other motherboard, and that's going to do this. However, I have a exhaust fan that also has a fan header and an RGB connector. And what I'm going to be doing is connecting this to this. going to be connecting once I get it installed this this to this right so now my RGB for my exhaust fan and this other two fans here are going to be connected and they give you this nice little piece here to to put them together and then this is going to connect to the board now I'm going to have control of every fan that's in my case the three in the front these two fans because these are the halo the halos have <clears throat> colors here i can do red and blue yellow and blue white and black or white and no color white and red or just have it do random rgb together and then there's a light on this too so i'm not going to do that right now but because my aio is already situated the first thing you want to do is is there's it comes with a splitter as well too for your fan because when you connect your fan your all, all, all three of these fans have their own thing going on now this one this aio pump is going to connect on the motherboard itself so we don't care about that but these two here they're going to connect to another fan header so before we do that install you want to make sure all your cords are connected so connect these rgbs and move them out the way then you have your two fan headers here because we don't care about this fan just yet because it's gonna go in its own place. You want to connect your splitter here. And this comes with the splitter as well too, guys, just to let you know. So you connect your splitter here. Hold on, why is it like that? Connect your splitter here and there's only one way to, to install it, four pins, but it's got the three pin there. And anyway, install it install it i think it's still a control it because it's got the four pin here so either way you got everything installed the way you want it installed and you got this hooked up just like this so now what you want to do is is we're going to have to run all of this extra stuff here all of these extra pieces through your case what i like to do here is is to take a velcro strip and velcro this so it's easier to manage because all of this needs to go out the back of my case if not i'm trying to gather everything so what i'm going to do here is grab me a velcro strip to put here and this is why i like velcro over zip ties because your velcro is more than one time use the zip tie is a one time use and it gets annoying so i'm going to go ahead and take these here and velcro that so that we can have some management going on. Now, if you don't want to have a Velcro, I would advise just doing this real quick so when you do install it, it's easier to just pull them through and then just take the Velcro off. So to give it a little bit more leeway, I'm just gonna do that there. So this will help you funnel them through the hole in the top and, you, and you don't, you're not sitting there flying. And like I said, I built this computer a couple times and I learned that tip and trick on the way on the inside. So let's move this to the side here. And let's get our case. Now, you want to install your AIO in your case before you attach it to your CPU. So, attaching to the CPU is the very last thing because you got to do your thermal paste and everything. So, let's do this here. So, because we know the way we want to orient it, right? And then I would advise that you connect your, your fans and everything before you do your seat your AIO so take your cords all of your cords and start to funnel them through the top of the back of your case so you have a guide as to what you want to do so you want to lift this up and start pulling them all the way through and at this time is when you want to connect your CPU fan to the case 
So you take that through for cable management, and then you want to push your, we're going to put this over here. You want to push your CPU fan back through here and connect it to the CPU fan, please. So that's going to connect, that's going to, to power your, your uh, CPU fans, your, your radiator fans for your CPU to spin and clean the cooling off. I mean, uh, uh, tear the cooling down so that you'll be able to Mm, we didn't put that screw in for the Wi-Fi. So you can, uh, so that your radiator will cool down the temperature of the coolant that's going across your CPU. And those will spin according to how hot your CPU is. So at this point, you want to grab your radiator and then go ahead and pull those cords back through. And then situate your radiator the way you want it. Now, play around with it. Don't tighten them all the way down. Just put a couple of them in there and see how it looks. But I would do, I would say do a caddy corner. And this is where the magnetic screwdriver helps you. Uh oh. Magnetic screwdriver helps you tremendously because your hand is holding this radiator up. And once you get a caddy corner, you can pretty much just let it hang there. And then don't screw them in all the way, but screw them in tight enough to where the AIO or the radiator can be held to the case so that you don't have to hold it under the bottom anymore. And there is one, two, three, four, eight screws on this particular Cooler Master AIO. So once you get that installed, like I said, don't put them all the way in because you may want to situate it and move it depending on how your case layout is. And there's another rack. Let's, let me show you. There's another rack or row of screws up here at the top. So you can see how that's situated. If you had a 360 or you want to push it back further, you have that option and it makes room for bigger AIOs. It also makes room for bigger fans. So you want to do a 140 type fan instead of a, a 120. So as you see, it's starting to come together here. So we're, uh, we're literally done. We are literally done. We just got to run the fans, install the exhaust fan, and this, peel, this, this PC build is complete. And I got to do better cable management from when I did the last bill. So, because I have marks on mine, I know exactly how these go. And it looks cool, so I'm just going to... Wait a minute. Nope, this needs to be moved over a little bit. Just tighten them down. Now we already have the fans connected to the CPU portion, so we're good there. We just need to tighten them down. And while we're here, we're going to turn the case around so you can see the cable management portion of the piece. So Turn it around here, and as you see, that was very easy to get your your cords through. I'm going to pull these here because we're going to pull this through here after we get our our exhaust fan hooked up. So now what I'm going to do here is, is tighten this up. Uh oh, I'm going to put this on here. I'm just going to let it hang for a second because once we get our exhaust fan in, we're going to do our last pieces of cable management. So, 
the AIO is ready to go. And before we do the exhaust piece, we're going to install the AIO onto the board. Now to install the AIO onto the board, it's fairly simple. We're not doing the connection of the AIO to the actual motherboard. We're gonna install it onto the CPU. So the first thing you wanna do is get you some thermal paste. I usually do just the dot. Dot in the middle is fine. Just like that. Get you a pea size, put it on there, get your screwdriver ready. You don't really need a screwdriver, but just in case. So with the AIO, when you first open it, there's a piece of plastic here. You wanna pull that plastic off. It's a sticker to protect it from shipping or whatever, but you don't want that on there when you connect it to the board. So move your cord there. And I forgot to connect the extender to that. So move your cord there. Uh-oh. What the hell? That was different. Hold on, give me a second, y'all. I need my magnetic piece for this. There we go. Magnetic screwdriver, I save you every time, bro. So let's put this back in here. I think I under over screwed it last time. Okay, so so now that you have your your thermal paste on there, let's move this over here. You want to situate your AIO to fit your brackets. So you push it down. And you want to hook your bracket over here. Now what you want to do is get them tight because you want to get that good seal. Spin it until you can't turn it anymore. That way you get that good seal. It doesn't have to be too tight, but I like mine to be on there really tight to make that thermal paste spread and keep a, a nice contact because you want a thermal transfer. That's what the paste is for. The paste is it's not like glue, but it's like a, a bonding, you know? So, good to go there. And we got that hooked up. Boom, not moving. Good sign, good sign. So now you got your, your pump there and then you can situate these, you can lower them, you can raise them. I like to have mine go like this a little bit, sag a little bit, and you're good to go. So now the next thing is, because I use an extender, I use an extender for my fan. I should have hooked this up earlier, but I forgot about it. This is my uh, pump fan. It's fine if you hook it up to a four pin because it's only going to work with three. There's no, there's a wrong way to do it. You see, they has this here. You want to hook that up, just push it in there. And then I'm going to have that go through the back. Now, final piece, your exhaust fan. It's going to go back here. So you want to situate your fan the way you want it. And because I'm using an extender, the only reason I'm using an extender is because I'm going to push my fan cables back through here in the back and then pull them, pull the extender back through so that I can reach to this fan header on the board down here. So what you want to do is take your fan, get your RGB, however you know, you have your RGB pieces. And before you install it, I'm going to install my fan sideways because if I install it this way, then we have the issue. I could use that and not use an extender, but then I have this cord that's just hanging. So in all effort to do better cord management, I'm going to install my fan sideways like I always do here in this build. And I'm going to push these through the top here. So get your two pieces together, pull them through here. There's one, and where's the second one? And then there's two. 
get them pulled through to allow your slack. Now, when you install your exhaust fan, the, this is the front of your fan where the air is going to go this way. And if you ever want to feel, you know, which way the air is coming out, just spin it and you can feel it coming in the back. Nine times out of ten, this is the back of your fan. And in this instance, since this is an exhaust fan, we're going to put that there. Now, I'm going to let that sag for a second. Oh, hold on. We'll just put that right there because I got to go get the, the screws. So we're going to do this caddy corner like always. So like I said, I'm installing it sideways like that. And you want to get your exhaust the way you want the case flow. See, this is pretty much the way I... Air is going to flow in this way, up through here and out the back, I mean out the top, and as well as push through here. And then you got air coming in from your, your uh, power supply coming up this way and going out the back. So you got air coming out the back here, you have air coming in here, cooling all of this, being pushed up by the, the fans of the GPU, so the GPU is pushing them up, and then you got this fan pushing air out, and these fans pushing air out too as well. So. I like to have this down. It doesn't necessarily have to be up. If you want to do up, you create like a little vacuum there. But I like to have it down so it captures the air right away. Or you can have it towards the middle, however you want to. But I have it down. And then you just want to tighten these up to get your fan there. Now these have rubber on the back so it eliminates vibration. Uh, so when the fan is vibrating with the case, it's really not... Uh, making any noise here so you have that and then boom good to go so at this point we're on the last steps of connecting the AIO pump as well as the fan now before I connect the fan I do the AIO pump because I don't want to put the fan on the AIO pump header so I'm going to pull this extension cord straight down and I, I push it through this tough land guard and I know this is my AIO if I can get these big fingers in there and here if you zoom in there's two headers there this is a fan this is the AIO pump so I'm going to hook my AIO pump and again there's only one way that you can do this correctly I hook my AIO pump in there and then boom, it's done. And if you want to verify, oh, it says it on the board, which is which, and pull that down. Now I'm gonna run my case fan back through here. And this is why I use the extension, because if not, then I'd have to use different case fans and everything, uh, headers. So I do the extension and I come in here and I connect the case fan header. Now, we get the AIO is getting in the way, it's being a pain. So sometimes you just gotta pull it a little bit. And again, there's only one way to install this the correct way because there's a, a notch there. Come on, let me look here. Cause I need some elbow room. And just for the sake of the video, because I know what this is, I'm going to put the AIO over there. I'm going to connect. Put that up there. Connect the case fan first. But I always do the pump header first. I'm just getting out of my way. So connect the case fan header. And come across the top. And connect the AIO. Come on. I can't see it. Yeah. 
issue with having big hands, bro, and big fingers. So, good. AIO pump connected, case fan header pump. I mean, case fan for the exhaust. Exhaust fan number one connected. And then, what we have in the back is simply cable management. But, we still have to connect the RGBs. Remember, we had the RGB issue to where we only had one RGB piece here for the case. So this is, let's zoom out, because we only have one more RGB header. So in order for all four, or one, two, three, for the three to work, we have to use this extension because this is from the AIO pump and this is from my fan. So it, this fan comes with this little clip here, this Cooler Master clip. So all we do is we take these two here, plug those in there, bam, and you'll see it. Let's zoom in. There's two arrows to show you how it connects. You have the two and the one. You connect them and bam, you see the arrows there. Those arrows don't match, you probably broke your connector. And then, boom, we put that together, it keeps them as one piece. And now we have us a piece to just plug this into the board. So, at this point we can come across, pull that through, or is it closer to the top to pull it through? No, we can make it. We pull that through and it's gonna to connect to this RGB header right there. So, we pull that through, give it a little slack, line up the two, two and one, and it's connected and then bam. So now this, this, and this will be controlled by the motherboard, the Aura Sync. And these three are also already hooked up down here to be controlled by the motherboard. And that's 100% it, folks. That's 100% it. Your case is connected. Oh, you know what? I gotta show you the, the final piece for the Wi-Fi. We're gonna connect that too. So, but in, in short term, we're going to manage this. And just verify everything is connected. Everything is connected. I see that I'm missing a fan header though. But okay, if you say so. And what I'm gonna do here is simply, I should've went to the back of that. That's gonna bother me. Give me a second, y'all. Let me disconnect this. As you guys can tell, I have a PC OCD, a wire OCD. So you just pull that through there like that. That's gonna give me some better management. And then I'm just gonna connect it back to the board again. And there we go, connected, boom. So now, with the cable management, we're just gonna pull these here. And I'm gonna take some Velcro that I have and just zip that up. Then boom, and kind of just push them up in there, in this area. Because all I'm trying to do is make sure that my case closes. And you, you see, I don't really wanna fiddle with that too much. I can't put a zip up here or up there, but we can get it like that, boom. And it's good to go. So cable manager is pretty good. We'll be able to take these and move these around, push that in there, get that snug, push that in there, get that snug, and we are good. So, so we are good there. So the last piece here is to put the Wi-Fi on the back. And if you installed Wi-Fi antenna, you have these two gold leads here. You see those gold leads there? You have those gold leads. So earlier I did install the 
the screw to hold the Wi-Fi piece to the board. So I'm going to do that right now. Like that screw. But you're gonna get in there, buddy. There we go. Now that's secured. Now what you want to do is here's your here's my antenna, my Asus Wi-Fi 6 antenna. It's magnetic, of course. You just take it. There's no right or wrong way to do that. You just plug them in here. And screw them until they're tight hand tight is fine you don't need a wrench or anything you might strip it with the wrench and then bam Wi-Fi is connected and you're good to go because this is magnetic I can put that there I could put it there but my desk is magnetic so I I hook this up to my desk and you can position these it's a very strong magnet and you can position those to there so that's it folks now you just have to Close your case up and plug it in and see if it works. If you're installing Windows, this is where you want to uh, put in your flash drive either back here or in the front and you start your Windows. But since my drive is already done, we're good to go. We just have to plug it in and it should work just fine. So let's plug it now, in. Now, the moment of truth. We got it plugged in. Let's see what happens. Here we go. And she's good. Look at that. Good to go. We got the, the Wi-Fi. We got the Wi-Fi hook connected down here with the Bluetooth on the USB, the M2s. GPU fans are spinning. Front span fans are spinning. All controlled by Aura. We're good to go. And that's your PC bill, fellas and ladies. Not too hard. Took a little bit to get here. Everything's hooked up good. AIO is running. Everything looks fine to me. M2 drives, everything looks fine. And we got our aura going on. Until next year's with the glass on. Let's take a look. Good to go.